Professor Lai Pichirian uh, from Inc. Uh, about histological, uh, about uh, uh, cisternostomy, anatomy, physiology, and radiology, and surgical technique. Professor Lai, you can start your lecture. Yeah, it's an honor to be here for the Yemeni's uh, Neurosurgical Conference. Ahmed, thank you very much for um, calling me for this. All my friends, I can see Victor, John, and Rahmat, everybody there. Yes. And uh, uh, see, during, uh, I thought I thought I'm in the lecture, Atul. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so I saw the previous lecture for, for Dr. Abdullah. It's a fantastic lecture. I, I was enjoying the lecture. Excellent work being done in Yemen. I'm proud of you guys. So, um, well, I'll go into, into trauma. How we use uh, skull base and vascular for for trauma. That's what I'm going to show you guys. So let me start off. Uh, you can see my screen? Yes. You can see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is yeah, this is a common scenario all over the world. In fact, the most common scenario, actually, more than any tumors, more than any aneurysms, the most common scenario that you will see is trauma. And this is an acute subdural hematoma. The surgeon is removing the acute subdural hematoma. And this is what happens. And I'm sure this is a pretty common scenario, too. I'm sure all of you would have seen this. How do you avoid this? That would be uh, my talk. Instead of just uh, taking some brain out and closing it without uh, bone, how can you avoid this? So my story starts in 2006 uh, in India, in a small medical college in India, where I, to cut a long story short, I mistook a trauma for an aneurysm because my assistant switched cases uh, rightfully because the trauma had dilated the pupils and I went in. Don't ask me now because it's a long story. I can tell you somehow. Maybe Ahmed will be able to explain it to you because he's been with me. But I exposed the trauma and I worked at it just like I would do an aneurysm. So I went into the subfrontal uh, cisterns, subfrontal cisterns, opened up all the cisterns, tried to look for the aneurysm and I didn't find the aneurysm. But the side effect was that the brain was lax. That is when I started thinking whether we can start doing this. And so we started doing it in 2007, 13 years back. So some of our first cases, Jesus 4 by 15 left people dilated decompression of the temporal, temporal bone. Uh, so here, we'd already started putting our bone flaps back. But we used to do a large temporal decompression. And therefore, only a rim of the bone used to be kept back. You can see how bad this case is. I mean, there's no cisterns, there's severe edema. There's a blackish discoloration everywhere. You know, see, it's pretty bad. And this is what happened after surgery. You can see the thin, thin rim of bone. You can see it in this cut, this cut. Thin rim of bone sitting there. The, the difference is that the cisterns are opened up. The cisterns are open. That is the difference. You can see all the cisterns. They're open. Ah, see this guy. 
see her the seventh first operative day see her the two sutures are not even removed she's in the icu okay but with that scan i i i don't think any place in decompressive hemicranial tumor would have saved her see this scan see the post op another one see the burst slope see the sub subdural see how much bad is this picture no decompressive no decompressive see the patient in my office okay came walking to my office before discharge see this acute subdural see the post op see this see the post op we also had studies with the icg to see the uh, the blood flow to these places after cystinostomy it's an interesting paper will come out soon see this case burst slow acute subdural before opening the dura after opening the dura how the brain is bulging out and after cystinostomy you see that this is from check republic his skin to skin time is now 65 minutes icp how he shows it's dropped from 48 to 11 another case acute subdural post op acute subdural see the this see the space that you have after cystinostomy another one see the brain and this is how this is my boy the boy whom i have trained in cystinostomy so uh, this is this is how they have been this is the membrane of liliquest being opened and uh, they are operating and i'm sure ahmed will tell you where when i was in nepal these boys uh, my junior boys were starting to do it uh, so the same way in india i expect that we start our our residents start this and you know this is how it's closed uh, this is how it is at closure brain is so lax one flap is kept back now what's the principle of this the principle is csf shift edema it's very simple you must understand that our work of upon csf the csf is there for a purpose it's not as a floating agent for the brain the csf cools and cleans the brain so all our sinuses they're acting like an air cooler so when we are taking breath when we are when we are taking breath what happens is this wet sinuses the wet mucosa in the sinuses they evaporate and because the latent heat of evaporation is lost the sinuses become cooler it's like wearing a sweat shirt wearing a sweaty shirt and sitting under the fan so when you do that you are cooling you are humidifying the room but that is not what you intend to you don't sit under a fan to humidify the room do you you sit under the fan to cool yourself so that is what the sinuses are doing it cools the sinuses are getting cooled and where is the suprasilar system the suprasilar system is right in the middle of all these sinuses so the suprasilar system is also cooled by 2.5 to 3 degree and this cool csf suprasilar system you must understand all the vessels come from the suprasilar system and go into the brain so there are these small spaces around these vessels so the csf is pumped into these small spaces around the vessels because of the pulsation of this vessel and it is called archimedes screw principle we described it for the first time so there is cooling of the brain and in the night when you sleep the acuporin 4 channels open and this csf from the varsha robin spaces also goes into the isf and they are they are uh, they drain off all the lactate and the chloride and all the other things as well so this is the cleaning pattern so this is how csf works csf goes into the brain rapidly from the suprasilar system so you must understand it does not go from the ventricles into the brain but from the cellas from the suprasilar systems and other systems the the csf rapidly goes into the brain exactly what is happening in trauma so when there is 
trauma, there is subarachnoid hemorrhage. And with the subarachnoid hemorrhage, what happens is the pressure inside the system goes up because blood is a newcomer and blood is coming at a rather high pressure. So what happens? There will be blood in the systems and all the CSF will get displaced through this through the virtual Robin spaces into the brain through the virtual Robin spaces. And therefore, the brain swells up. Imagine taking, you take a hundred or a one liter Coke bottle and inject, try to inject about 80 ml of normal saline into that Coke bottle. See the pressures, how it will go up. Exactly what happens. So doing a decompressive will not help you because if you do a decompressive, 12 into 13 centimeter large defect and the brain is coming out about one to 1.5 centimeter, that much brain, what, whatever went into the brain from the supracellular system, that much brain is herniating actually into the decompressive uh, site. That will be okay to save your life, but that brain is gone. Many studies are there which shows that decompressive hemicrinectomy, it's better that it is not done. If you are a bit unkind, you can say that you are converting a cemetery into a vegetable market. So that is not actually, that is not exactly what we want. In a third world country, these patients are a burden to the family and to the government. We cannot really allow this primitive surgery to go on. We have to start like in aneurysm surgery and skull base surgery, we started using micro surgical principles. Trauma is the most common uh, pathology and we must start using micro surgical principles. Trauma is not something secondary. Now these are our experiments. We had a weight drop model. If our um, our assumptions were correct, we would have seen blood in the systems and CSF in the brain. I mean, and we saw, we saw that the restituated hyperintensities 15 minutes after the trauma, it could be blood, it could be water. So we saw there are blood, there is blood in the systems and there is displacement of neuronal structure showing that there is water in flux. So the CSF shift edema was proved with basic science in Calgary, in Canada. And people ask me, why can't you put an EVD? Because the EVD does not communicate. The ventricular CSF doesn't communicate with the brain. How you know? You inject a marker into the ventricle and this is what happens. Inject a marker to the to the supracellular system, to the systems. This is what happens. There's communication. So when two balloons are communicating, you put a hole in one balloon, the other balloon also, the pressure in the other balloon also comes down. Imagine brain and the CSF as two balloons which are communicating with each other. You put you open the cisternal compartment to the atmosphere, this, that balloon's pressure comes down and then the brain pressure is also kind of come down. It's very simple. This is Ilif explaining actually does so along very specific anatomical structures. There's specialized, a specialized anatomy that allows the, C, the CSF to move very quickly and very deep into the brain, exchanging with the fluid that's inside the brain and then moving so, out. This is this pathology that I told. That is what happens in decompressive hemicrinectomy. After CSF, this is CSF shift edema. In cystinostomy, this is what we do. And decompressive, this is what we do. So to get into the base of the brain, as Abdullah was talking about, um, the skull base surgery, we need to unlock the brain in axial and sagittal planes to get into the base of the brain. Otherwise, if you get 
get in, try to get in from the top of the brain, this is disaster because the brain is very swollen. Now, this is one video which will show you a transcavernous approach. This is a cutting of the orbitomeningeal branch, orbitomeningeal band, and then a transcavernous approach. But believe me, this is all relatively new. In my last 13 years, this is probably about six or seven years old. This is not how we used to get into the base of the brain. If I show this, people are going to think, oh, maybe I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to show you, as usual, my earlier very, very bad surgical videos so that you understand that, you know, you, you can, without much of this ACP, PCP removal, you can get into the base of the brain and then you can go ahead and drain. You can put some retraction on the frontal lobe. People are worried about retraction on the frontal lobe, but people are not worried about Uh oh, I think we're having bandwidth problems with I too. So we just be patient and wait. And I is an experienced presenter. He'll be back. Just be patient. Am I seen now? Yes. Right. You want to share something, right? I... Yes. yes. Yeah. You're seeing? Yes. Yeah. Have... Okay. You're seeing it? Yeah, you're on the way. Yeah, there you go. Getting to the okay, base. So now. Yeah, now I'm going to show you some of the worst videos. See, this is a very, very severe brain swell. I'm not going to run through it. This is the only thing I want you to see. You have understood the CSF shift edema. You've seen the radiology. You'll be wondering how you do it. See the brain coming out. Okay? And see the opening. It's only 2.5 centimeters. See the brain coming out. Say, ah. Okay? Say, ah. All right. This is as bad as it can get. But you are into the optic nerve soon now. And once you are into the optic nerve, your brain swelling is going to come down. And see the opening. Its opening is only 2.5 or 3 centimeter. You are into the base. See the kind of force I need. That's when you appear. People tell me, oh, this is not good. This is a lot of force. We don't apply that kind of force these days because we use a lot of skull-based technique. But even without any skull-based technique, if you take out a little bit of frontal lobe, basic frontal lobe, um, using the microscope, it is far better than the hypocrisy of telling me, oh, no, we don't use the microscope, but we just open the dura and allow the brain to swell. That is nonsense. Okay, so uh, you use the microscope, take a, do a little bit of this retraction. This is when you don't have a subdural. When you have a subdural, it's much more easier. Once you remove the subdural, much more easier. Okay, now you're getting into the optic now. Okay, you, you got the carotid and the optic now. You start getting CSF now and the brain becomes much, much more manageable. I wanted to show you these videos because I wanted to say, ah, is this what I'm going to do? Yes, this is how you start off. And then you get much better. Even my boys are much better now. Ahmed will tell you, it's, uh, it's always not this bad. Now you get into the membrane of liliquis. You see, you, I took less than five minutes. You count the time. It's less than five minutes to get into the basilar. Less than five minutes. Okay. 
That's a basilar. That's a basilar artery, right? And the brain is now lax. We put in a, we put in a tube. Okay, don't bipolar. Just keep on irrigating. And once you put in a tube into the prepondine cistern in front of the basilar, you're done. We're not fast forwarding it. It's uh, this fast. I mean, cystonostomy doesn't last. So now the brain swelling is, see the pulsation. See the pulsation. Then if there is a large subdural, you can open. Okay, now you can open. If you open, large subdural difficult swelling, the brain will be on your face. So first do a three centimeter, 2.5, three centimeter, get into the base, don't damage the vessels. And after that you can open and then you can do your second round. Okay, to see whether there's bleeding. Just control the bleeding and I, let me assure you, once your ICP goes down, the bleeding goes down. You've seen this, many of you would have seen this in tumor surgery and aneurysm surgery. Once your ICP goes down, your bleeding goes down. Okay, all the venous bleeding will stop because the ICP raises the cerebral venous pressure. So once the ICP goes down, the venous bleeding goes down. And then it's much more simpler if you, if you put in larger magnification and then you start removing, washing out all the blood for maybe 20, 25 minutes, have some patience, wash out all the blood, and then you open the dura, you will find that there is no need to take off this bone flap. Okay, you can see the CSF coming out. You can see how much damage that brain is, but no problem. You can see CSF keeping on coming out. That's the basilar artery there. Pituitary stalk also can be seen. Carotid, optical carotid, that's the basilar artery clearly seen. You can see even there is tachycardia for this patient. Put in your drain, come out. See the brain? It's not that it is difficult to close or something. There's so much damage for this brain, frontal and temporal lobe, but no problem. Brain is not coming out or, you know, we have not gone and removed blocks of brain, nothing. The brain is pulsatile and lax. See another one. I wanted to show you all these very, very bad cases, okay? From the, at least uh, five, six years before. You see, you open and then see the brain coming out, okay? Put in a stitch, pull the dura, open. So don't tell me we are not seeing brain edema. Some people tell me, oh, you don't see this kind of brain edema or brain fungus. You're opening again only two centimeter, three centimeter of this. That is all, nothing more. And see, after cystinostomy, this is it. Only that basic frontal one or two centimeters of brain is damaged. Who cares about it? When you have such things to, at stake, when you have the patient's imminent death or severe morbidity this is a small price to pay. So get into micro neurosurgery. Okay, this is my message. Now you can read about the indication score, about the ipsilateral CP angle system widening, and it's um, and it's uh, I mean uh, importance. All the pressures, all the studies from all over the world, the anatomy, physiology, which I have told you, surgical review, I mean, all this you can keep on reading. This all is all available on the net, okay? Ahmed can help you. Now, you know, what is the, what is the criticism? <laughs> the criticism is that 
Most of the residents do not know how to do it. Therefore, we should continue to do decompressor. I, I challenge all of these guys. Can you tell me that most of the residents don't know how to do pitrocliverals? Most of the residents do not know how to do aneurysms. Most of the residents don't know how to do other tumors. So let us do decompressor for all of them. If that is acceptable, then I'll say probably this critique is also acceptable. It's a, uh, I don't have to say that it is nonsense, it is. So, Gino study. This is the system has to be being included. The online registry, everything is coming. As I have talked to you, to you about the, the cooling and the cleaning system, the Archimedes screw principle, everything I have already told you. This is a Springer Neurosciences chapter. We were honored to have this as a chapter in 2013. Seven years back, we proposed the cooling and cleaning. If you type cooling and cleaning of the brain, this is our work. It is, uh, this is the Springer Neuro Series. Thank you very much. I stop sharing now, I guess. Mm, yes, please. What happened, John? Are you okay? I heard a very strange sound. Okay. Okay, I guess we're going to have a little discussion, correct? Uh, is that correct, Ahmed? Looks like, looks like you were drinking something, John. No. Yeah. Yogurt. <laughs> we have I see. Uh, five minutes for questions. Anybody yes, yes. Go ahead, questions, please. Uh, I uh, no questions. Okay. Then we will shift to next speaker. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Fantastic. Professor. Thanks, I. Okay. Thank you so much. Th uh, thank you, guys. It was an honor.